What's up, rascals? So a couple weeks ago, I shared with you a kitty horror show game called Seven Days, but there was only one day to show. Well, at the time, I didn't realize it, but the game was actually programmed so that it would only show one day on whatever day you were playing it on. So on Sunday, it would only play, play the day Sunday. Monday, it would only play Monday, and so on. Personally, I think that's pretty clever. And so I spent at least 10 minutes every night last week playing this game so I'd get each day and be able to read each note to share the complete story with you guys. Now, you know, I'm not a big fan of big, long, super episodes, but in this case, I think I'll make an exception. You saw Sunday the first time. Now you get to see the rest of the week. Hey, the amazing Rando. Watch Rando the Great construct sets with his very mind. <laughs> So, oh, oh God, oh, excuse me, why is everything gray and I am, um... oh, what's going on out there? Hello? Is that a searchlight or a very funky moon? I don't know. Meow? Woke up early-ish this morning, but wound up spending an four hours just laying there. Listen to the radio tower down the block, droning on about the state of the grid. No flurries today, no mist, no storms, just heat. The kind that makes you feel like you're drinking the air. Leaves a film on your skin like you're some kind of wetland amphibian. When I finally dragged myself out of bed, it was mid-afternoon, and I knew the day was going to be a write-off. Still wanted to go to the store, though, because I know how I spiral if I don't exercise at least a little bit. Decided I'd pick up some booze and snacks and have a fuck it night. Give myself a break. Do chess puzzles and watch some of that CCTV footage Gage sent me from the walled city where the dollmakers all live. He says they get real fucked up in there. Weird parties and automaton circuses. Blood sports. I'm not usually into reality TV, but I trust Gage to know when I dig something. Well, Gage sounds like a pretty chill dude. And, uh, oh god, why is there so much misty fogginess? Okay... You know, sometimes it feels like your life is in a fog. Ooh, this is a nice little extra bedroom. On the way to the store, just on the far side of the overpass, I looked up and saw this shivering black shape about 20 feet up. It looked like a blob of ink hanging in the sky, only it was hard, like spikes instead of blotches and it was twitching like it was electrified. I'd never seen an anomaly that pronounced before. I almost pissed myself until I remembered I was an Oneg, so I didn't have anything to worry about. Nothing in my blood for the anomalies to latch onto. I feel so bad for AB Paws folks. I'd never leave my house. I looked up at some of the buildings on the far side of the street, and in the windows I could see the faces of some people pressed up against the glass. They looked like they were howling, wailing in pain and sadness, trying to push themselves through the glass so they could get at the anomaly hanging two stories up in the air. The more windows I looked in, the more people I saw. I wondered what would happen to them if they could have gotten up to the thing and touched it like they seemed to want to. I've heard stories about what happens when you make direct contact with an anomaly, and they're all nightmares. Ooh. This is some funky world building we got going on here, and I don't know what to think of it. Other than the fact that, uh, this uh, individual we are is uh, definitely having an off day. 
Ah, there's a toilet and bathroom in full spread. Well. Oh, there it is! The anomaly of which we spoke in the letter. Fascinating. Huh. It really does look like an electrified ink blob. Ah, there's the note. When I got to the store, the security agent outside wasn't anyone I knew. I think he must have been new, because you could tell he was taking his job way too seriously. It's just a fucking grocery store, but he's out front checking levels on every single person trying to get in. There was an actual line to get through the door. When it was my turn, I held out my wrist and he leveled me and I started walking in and when he grabs me by the arm. He screams, I don't fucking think so, and I remember that they don't check for blood toxicity anymore. Now they check for anomalous radiation, too. I'd gotten too close, even if it hadn't done anything to me. I tried telling him that I was an O-neg, even though I knew that didn't mean anything. The damage was done. He put his hands on my shoulders and shoved me hard out of the line. A couple people gasped. I could feel myself starting to cry instantly, so I pretty much just fled. I fucking hate people sometimes. Not enough to stop someone from doing something they need to do. You just have to make sure they feel as pathetic as possible in the process. I feel terrible for thinking this way, but a part of me hopes he's AB positive and touching me made him puke his guts out later on. Alrighty then. I'd love to stay, but uh, this hazy green fog is... um. Kinda playing with my head a little bit. I'm starting to see funny colors. Oh. Hello, Mr. Squirrel. Seems a little calmer than usual. This is different! Why is my house on a train system? Ah, oh, I was not expecting that. At least I don't have to pack when I move. <laughs> this is convenient. Ah, uh, I, I think I think I see a theme here. Hmm. Ah. Uh. Aha. Uh -huh. I want to see if there's maybe a note in my bathroom. Nope, because the door is closed. Uh, check for notes. I started up here, so I may as well start finding notes up here. Goody! Didn't make it to the store today. I had to stop at the train crossing because a train had woken up and was having a tantrum. We live in a world where Thomas the Tank Engine is on antidepressants. Pretty bad one too. All of its legs and forelegs were flailing and whimpering and it kept lurching from side to side like it was trying to wrench itself off the tracks. Tear the membrane. It kept screaming and screaming. That awful train scream that sounds like the wailing of rusted metal and angry shrieks of an old woman. The train was long enough that I couldn't have gone around behind it and the track in front of it was suspended over. That steep creek that runs along the bike path. The one with like 30 foot sheer walls that's mostly just a bed of trash with a little thin line of running water down the middle. I just had to wait. Okay, so the trains are living organisms as well. That's kind of an interesting concept. Okay, whatever. I, I can dig it. Sort of. Now the big question is, is all of this madness in my head, or is this literal world? Because I'm starting to think that this is more surreal than real. Just spitballing. There's a note here in this, this nice little room with just a desk. Everything, the entire decor changes from day to day. Ah, uh, that much I've noticed. When I showed up, there were only a few responders from the city trying to deal with the thing, but more started coming. 
They milled around with their needle rods, trying to jab the train's chassis and get it sedated again. But its legs kept whipping and lashing so they couldn't get too close. One of the responders chanced it and a foreleg shot straight across his neck and decapitated him. And his body fell over and his neck poured out that gray curdled milk stuff they have for blood. I was at least 30 feet away from the train the whole time, just watching. But I guess that was too close for one responder because he shouted at me to get the fuck back it and he shoulder checked me. And I fell on my ass into the mud. Well, what a dick! The dickliest dick! Curiouser and curiouser. Now then, where is that other note which we know is around here? Because I saw it. There you are. Hi. I thought about crying, but it didn't end up doing it. I was too tired in a weird way, and I just sort of felt defeated rather than hurt. One of those fucking figures moments. I sat there like that for 40 minutes watching the responders trying to deal with the train, jabbing at it with needles. None of them hassled me after the first one. Two more got cut in half, and the others just sort of worked around their bodies. It took nearly 20 responders, but finally they got the train doped up enough to put it back to sleep and get it moving again. Then they cleared out and just left the bodies behind like that. More trash for the world pile. I got back up after the train had passed. I could have gone to the store like that, but I just felt tired and my ass was soaked with mud, so there didn't seem to be much point. I went home and showered, and the crying caught up to me. It's kind of an interesting way of perceiving, uh, dealing with depression, you know? It's... everyone goes through rough patches, and... and they... just cope with things in their own way. It's just, if this is just like a coping mechanism for depression, very interesting one, especially if this is like the mind's eye of someone facing that depression. It's it's a unique twist on it. That actually scared me, and I legitimately thought that something was going on in the outside, real, real outside. Oh my goodness, it's so dark and gloomy, and all sorts of no. Hello. Let me just step out on the non-existence, and it looks like I'm surrounded by the Colorado Rockies. Huh. Oh. Oh dear. Ah, uh, things are not looking good for me today. It's a definitely a downer day. Ah. Oh. Ironically, the note starts out with, "I woke up today in a good mood. Not sure why. It just kind of happens sometimes. Maybe I go to bed a little early the night before, or I just sleep a little better somehow." And then I wake up feeling actually rested and I get right out of bed instead of laying there awake for two hours. I checked the weather and it was toxic flurries, but light enough that my mask would take care of it. I still have plenty of filters left from that bulk sale, back when my friend Alma drove me to the store and I got to use her trunk. Sometimes I think about calling her family and asking how they're doing. She got caught out one night when the city grid went down and the street sweeper chewed her up. Her little brother might remember me, but I didn't really know the rest of her family at all. So usually I end up deciding not to call. Like, it'd be more disrespectful than just leaving them alone. That's the excuse I make for myself, at least. Yikes. Those street sweepers are bad news bears. Check the perimeter real quick. There's... Sometimes there's notes to read. Why do I leave notes for myself in random spots strewn about the house? <sighs> Who knows? You never really know what you're... Sometimes you just do things without even thinking about... What... What's going on. 
I don't know. I don't know if I... Because I slept well and I had energy, I decided to take my scenic route through the outskirts. The one that would take me through that little fake gated community the city built for its anomalous event preparedness testing. I like it because the houses are all spaced out and empty, and inside them it's all white walls and white floors, so when it flurries like this, it's like this bright, idyllic little suburb on a snow day. Nobody ever goes there, and the city doesn't use it anymore, and the streets are broad, so it feels peaceful and isolated. I probably wouldn't have time to go into any of the houses, but if I packed an extra filter, I knew I could at least walk through it. When I got there, though, it was gone. The whole thing sucked down into one of the boreholes that had been appearing outside of the city limits. Boreholes, you say? Are they digging sinkholes? That's actually some pretty nifty shelving. I like it. What is this imagery? Oh, it's a topographical something or other. Crater Lake, Oregon? Notes and things and things and notes. Do I have any others down here? No? Yes? No? Whoa. Weird way to decorate, but all right. Yeah. Bleak. That is what this day is. It's bleak. Even though a good mood has been had, and is, and will be for whoever knows how long. But, well, note, we read it. I don't know if borehole is the right word for those things. It probably isn't. But that's what I started calling them. Just a quarter mile wide hole in the ground. A perfect cylinder slipped out of the world like a puzzle piece. Deeper than sight, the ash flurries blow away from them, like there's some kind of draft you can't feel. And they seem to eat sound. On the far inner wall of it, about 30 feet below the surface, there was an exposed access tunnel that was like looking down the open mouth of an artery in a wall of dark soft tissue. The lights in the tunnel were still on, but blinking like they'd been damaged. I just stared at it for a while, feeling this shitty, impotent anger at it, because I'd never see that nice prop suburb again. That place had been mine, it felt like, and the hole had taken it away. I had to double back and go the normal route. I almost dropped my new mask filter into the borehole when I switched them out, but I caught myself. Well, that's good. No one likes to breathe toxic fumes. That's just bad times all around. Oh, really? I feel like a man in a box. Meow. <laughs> okay. What do we got? I was hungover today, so I ended up staying in bed until almost 6 p.m. Even then I didn't feel 100%, but after walking around the house for a bit and drinking some water and eating some food, I at least felt capable of standing. I couldn't afford not to get to the store tonight. I'd put off refilling my hormones for too long and now I was out. I don't know why I do this to myself. I have the money in hand. I can refill them whenever I need, but I always end up putting them off until the very last second. Checked the weather and city grid status, misting so I didn't need a mask, but the control grid was down and so the street sweepers would be hunting. City Sec was working to address the problem as soon as possible for my continued excellent service, which meant it would probably be down all night. I had to go to the store though. So I had to use the sewers. Oh, that's nasty. The street sweepers must be- Hello. Hi. 
Hi. <laughs> what the hell are you? Uh, I'm just gonna go inside now. You have a pleasant evening. Those guys were freaky. They're all over the place. Why are they all over the place? They're watching me. They haunt me. Those evil botches. Are they getting closer? They might be getting closer. I don't know. What? Next note. I leave for myself. I leave for the person in my house. In my head. I don't know. Ugh. I fucking hate going through the sewers. I don't know what it is about the sewers in this town, but it's like everyone down there has something to say to you. People are living in the sewers. <laughs> Somehow I'm not surprised. I don't know what it is about the sewers in this town, but it's like everyone down there has something to say to you. People just walk right up and touch you, put their hand on your arm, shout hey at you over and over even when you've got headphones in, asking your blood type or trying to shove little religious comics into your hand. I've read online that sewers in other cities aren't so bad. It can actually be really rad and fun and safe with cool places to hang out and interesting cultural stuff going on. Not here. A red-faced guy in my path saw me coming and started shouting at me, asking me over and over if I was an own egg, like it was any of his business. I kept my head down and walked past, but I could hear him start to approach me from behind, keeping up with me. I walked faster and I heard him start shouting fuck you at me, went back up to the street level when I was still two blocks away from the store, just because I was scared. The thought of murderers patrolling automatons seemed somehow less threatening than a drunk old man who decided I was a problem. I did see one street sweeper, but it didn't see me. Okay. Ooh. The paintings always change when there are high, when there are paintings, but, uh, yeah, a lot of things change when there are... Can you do me a favor? It might actually, uh, ease the tension in the room. <laughs> Can one of you shout, I am Groot? No? Okay. Oh. Nice. When I got to the store, the security agent outside was that girl who remembers me and always smiles. She had her hood off, even though it was misting and her mask was down around her chin. And she was spinning her blood level gun around one finger. She's really pretty, and I can tell she thinks I'm cute, but I'm also positive she has me clocked as a vaguely femmy dude because I never present when I go there. So the attention doesn't flatter just hurts. She didn't bother to check my levels though. Just said hey and winked and let me go in. I think I must have looked rattled and she didn't want to hassle me. She knows I'm an own egg. She is too. I keep thinking one of these days I'll ask her name, but I always talk myself out of it because there's no point. She'd end up asking for mine. Couldn't get my hormones refilled. Couldn't get my hormones refilled. I'd woken up too late, and the sewer trip had taken too long, so the pharmacy was closed when I got there. Bought beer I didn't want, just so I wouldn't look like I'd fucked up completely. Okay, okay, at first I thought this was a female character, but maybe they're an in-transition transgender? I don't know, the context clues, I guess. I don't know, that's what I'm getting out of this suddenly. At first, I didn't know what gender uh, this person is uh, whose notes I'm reading, but, uh, who knows? You guys still creep me out, though. Oh, things sound dark and nasty evil-like. What the? What's going on out there? Hello? That seems a bit scary, pokey, stinky like. Uh, 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 uh. It's all around. I'm guessing that I'm not going outside the house today. 
always notes giving me clues and context. No chance of going to the store today. It's root day, so everyone and their fucking grandmas out in the streets, congesting the entire city, digging in the mud for those little clusters of black pink roots, cramming their mouths full of it, drunk out of their minds on the nectar and publicly banging each other's brains out. I'm thankful at least that I don't have anywhere to be don't work anywhere that's open and I made sure to grab all the stuff I'd need for a few days the last time I went to the store. Still, now that I can't leave, I'm resentful about it. Like I'm being trapped in my house because of this bullshit celebration of nothing. I probably wouldn't even go anywhere. But just the fact that it's not a choice makes my hackles up. Has my hackles up. What the... I have never heard that phrase ever. I don't know what it means. Any other day and working up the nerve to get out would be like squeezing blood from a stone. It figures, I guess. Alrighty. Funky fresh. What about in the bedroom? Any notes in here? While I'm looking at the strange, creepy trees and hearing the strange, creepy noises. What about in here? Aha! This one! My sort of friend Becca called me around two in the afternoon. I haven't been talking to her much lately because every time I do, she says something shitty or talks down to me and I end up pissed off about it for days. She did it again this time. Hey girl, she yelled in her loud, happy, day-drunk voice. I could imagine the black hair-like fibers of the roots threaded between her grinning teeth. Where are you at? Home, I said. Are you fucking serious? No, get out here. I don't want to, I said. This isn't my day. She must have found a quiet alcove because I actually heard her sigh in that pitying, patronizing, you poor thing way. Babe, I know this stuff is hard for you. I get that. But you can't let shitty stuff that happens to you rule your life. I promise if you came out, you'd feel better. I'd show you a good time. Says you, you don't know my life. You answered with, hey girl. I am not girl. I am dog. Excuse you. This is the kind of shit I'm talking about. There is no shitty stuff that happened to make me hate Root Day. I just don't like eating the stuff don't like what it does to me, and the thought of being out in the sludge and mud and smoke, trapped in a seething mass of loud, horny strangers makes me feel sick. But Becca can't reconcile that, so she decided that there must be some kind of trauma there. Some shitty stuff that I've gone through to make me afraid of this objectively great, fun thing that I should like because everyone does. So she treats me like this wounded fawn in need of care and rescue pities me and waits for the day I'll come out of my shell. I feel less like a friend and more like a pet project, something she can pat herself on the back about. I said, have fun, and hung up, and she at least had the sense not to call back. I spent most of the day listening to old transmissions from the Dollmaker City on my headphones to drown out the yelling and the sounds of the street sweepers fighting the crowds. I didn't get to sleep until 5 a.m. Lovely. That is a creepy looking thingy though that go out there no. Whoa. Things are definitely a little different than the last time. Whoa, what? What is... What is the going on here? Can I... Okie dokie, I can explore some. Can I explore out here? No, I can't leave the confines of my houseicle. Bummer. Okay, but... The... everything is different. Yeah. 
There's pictures of flies everywhere in the kitchen. What the hell? Is that what this? Is that what's in front of my face? All the all the spackling and whatnot. Hey, look. There's a note. All right, all right. Let's see. Made it to the store earlier today. I'd woken up a little late, but I was a little more energetic than usual, so I didn't spend as much time laying around as I normally do. There weren't any flurries today, just mist, so I didn't have to wear my mask. Just had to detox as soon as I got back home. I kind of like it when it mists. It probably sucks for people who drive, but since I walk, the low visibility isn't a problem, and it gives everything this quiet haunted closeness. Everything's dark and wet, and the air tastes like nail polish remover and warm concrete. Forgive me for saying this, but I think that would leave a, um, kind of a bad taste in my mouth. A little bit toxic. The store even had everything in stock for once, so I was able to tick everything off my list. I always like how that feels. Isn't that nice? Uh, not a fan of the decorations this time, but, uh, at least there's slightly different things going on. Hmm, for better or for worse. What, pray tell, is going to happen next? Is that the only note I get today? Really? Frickin' really? Let's get up on top, stair, up, up the stairs, up the stairs, go on up the stairs, and uh, through to the... Ah! Oh, I can't get up on the patio? Poof. What is there to do? Can I jump through the hair again? Or was it this one? No? Flies, 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 flies. You... There are a couple that are slightly brighter than the others. What's up with that? Also, what if there's what if there's a note on the ceiling? I didn't that I didn't notice because I'm not looking at the ceiling or in the sky. Or at this guy. What guy? I don't know. Maybe I'm seeing things. Maybe I want to see things. Maybe that's why I am looking around this place, and that is a big-ass picture of a fly. I'm kind of annoyed that I can't open any of these doors, but maybe that's just certain ones will open on certain days. Ooh, that's clever, if that's actually the case, which I kind of hope it is, because that would be kind of neat, and uh, it entices you to... Check out the game on different days at different times, maybe? Or maybe not different times, but different days. Hello? 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 Is that one note the only thing that I have going for me today? Perhaps. I really, really wish that I could interact with other stuff. Or at least more today. Eh, whatever. <laughs>